Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Monster Train. So I literally stopped my recording because I was like, I just want to play more. I don't really, I don't think it's possible for me to, you know, do any more than I have. So I'm going to play more and, and in this way I'm not going to, you know, like have more, you know, but as it happens, I'm just going to win again. So I got really lucky. Dante is a random encounter where if you allow him to load your deck with a bunch of blight cards, that'll damage your fire. I'm at full health, by the way. If you allow him to load your deck with a bunch of blight cards that damage your pyre, Dante's candle, three damage, by the way, which is really bad, eventually he will join your party and he will gain multi-strike for every blight card in the deck. I also got really lucky and I got... This thing. Whenever you play a Blight card, the Spire gets healthier. Um, which, of course, put more Blight cards in my deck. Uh, so, he's just kept getting stronger. And he now does, like, 200 damage a single strike, and he can do, like, 8 of them. So he just machine guns through guys. And that's another Covenant down. Like, really, ordinarily, I am not, like, beasting on games like this. It's kind of unusual and rare that I would be. Uh, I don't even know what this achievement's for. Um, deck with at least 40 cards. That's because of all the crap in my deck. Covenant 9, your fire takes 20 damage. Jeez. And more gra more gold cards. Good lord. I have other things to do. I have other things to do in this game. I mean, jeez. Uh, so what even happens in, in the new rank? You take 20 damage at the start of the run. Why? I wonder why. Um... So, let's just show off the other ones real quick here. It's going to kill my win streak. I'm sad about that, but that's okay. Uh, so, the candle guys... These are candles. They're weird. You can, you can equip them with a thing called a burnout. So, you can see that this guy has two burnout, and he's free. And these add burnout. So, what that actually means is... As dudes are getting killed, or as dudes are fighting, they're gradually going out, right? They're getting, you know, weaker. Because, uh, you know, they're candle guys. Such is kind of the nature of it. I gotta turn this back up to the, my usual preferred speed, huh? See that these dregs are slowly burning out. But we can do that and put more burnout on them, and they'll get more juice. For all the good it'll do. Right, yeah, this is a. This is a group I don't know how to play. Hmm. Hmm. 
So, yeah, they have a very, very unusual setup. Because, uh, like, as as you're playing as them, they're they're dying out. They're going out. Because, again, they're, they're candle guys. And, like, you can get way more juice out of one in any individual dude. He'll just be, like, way stronger. But the problem is, is that, like, these dudes being that strong doesn't actually mean that much. Because, like, yeah, they're strong, but they will die on their own without help. So yeah, they end up at a very, at a pretty unusual place, I would say. And you can also see that they're called waxers. And they also have a really small uh, usage. They're only one. And again, they're cheap. They're free, in fact. But yeah, it's just really problematic to be like fighting an uphill losing battle where you're literally like hoping that the, the dudes that you have under your control under your command will last this reforming is another unique mechanic um to them you can make more of them because of course they're going to die even if you play perfectly and that's lame Uh, in fact, it's really bad. But you can either apply Endless to them or you can reform them, which does their own thing. See, the useful thing about this guy is that, like, because, like, he's he's uh, he's built around death. He's built around seeing his friends die and go, you know, go out. Whenever anyone dies around him, you get free uh, juice added onto him. That's what Harvest does. So you get some nice synergy with him. You know, certainly not bad at all. I'm like yeah it's good I just <laughs> I just kind of have less less to say so you can add burnout to a guy and bring him back and then these guys down here can all be buffed you know so this is kind of my uh, this is a story I'm just gonna tell it doesn't really have anything to do with anything relevant But I was dressed like a thirst trap yesterday. Uh, and my wife posted a photograph of me on Facebook.com uh, of me and her at a coffee shop. And somebody who I have not spoken to since high school was like, <laughs> not Alfred in this DILF era. And I was, I was blown away. Like, Ma'am, we, we haven't... 
this guy's interesting. We haven't spoken in in maybe a decade. Why are you? Why is this an okay thing to say that you that you think I'm a tell? You realize that that's weird, right? So her plan is to get hit. So I'm gonna keep buffing her with with that. Hmm. Let's make you tougher. So it's actually possible to get a thing where you can put more wax on them where their burnout goes up, and that's kind of useful. Alright, so burnout is way, like, it makes you way stronger. And you imagine, like, these guys that only have two burnout, they're not that strong, but still, they have a lot of attack. But then this guy, you know. But I don't really like that. It does not have a lot of staying power because the nature of it is that you either need to cast spells that are limited. Uh, yeah, you either need to cast spells that are, like, totally limited or you need to do something that permits them to... Sorry, I'm trying to think here. Nothing's happening. You need to do stuff in order to make sure that you can keep having a deck to play with, you know? <laughs> What's your burnout? You only have two. So let's put this on you. See, having a bunch of things where they're all based around getting killed and then coming back is useful. That's kind of how this deck is balance for sure. Yeah, she was like, not Alfred and his Delphara. And then the really funny thing is that she corrected herself and and instead corrected to say they like not Alfred and their Delphair. <laughs> Which, like, I don't even know how she knows my pronouns. We've not spoken in years. It makes it kind of weird, you know? I don't even know what the counterpart to Delphair Nelf is. Delf? Maybe? So I don't really expect to be able to do that one. Again. I don't really expect to be able to beat this one because I don't really like these guys as much and on the, you know, difficulty nine. More burnout, more magic. Great. Both of those are fantastic. Let's purge a train steward. Let's get a random rare melt. Okay, another one in. That's fine. So yeah, basing your deck around people dying is completely valid. Alright. And then you. Let's put you on because we have the juice for it. I'll let him get away. I don't really need like a super intense, like super well handled, like mega fight here. I'm just paying the bills, you know? See, so, yeah, that harvest is when anyone dies, which of course is awesome for you, but can be terrible for not you. how to get this card to really shine. I guess I should have him back here.
Yeah, I guess so. Ten times the number of friendly bits. Yeah, I guess they just gotta go at the back. Kinda weird. Because that soul did trick. It was just really quick in there. That one's a good spell. I love spells that gather steam. I love I love anything like that. Of just I I did this this turn. Okay, now next turn it'll be even bigger. That's always great. I'm gonna go upgrade it actually. Yeah. It would be nice to be able to um, stick something like. Oh, what am I thinking of here? These guys aren't doing that much for me, so I'll get rid of one. It'd be nice to be able to stick holdover on it. That takes more attacks. Arcus. Fell is a little scarier, but usually Arcus still isn't like great. <sighs> this is the dude who makes your spells go up as you're doing spells. So Frostbite is another interesting thing. I talked about it a bit. Being able to use Frostbite on a boss is really convenient. Oh, my champ. That ain't good. Honestly, that's fine because I, I want to be completed with this run sooner rather than later. We can actually hold the line upstairs. That's good. Oh, right, shit, this thing. Yeah, sometimes the way that people play is like they, they just ignore the bottom row. Four soul. So if some guys die before me, that'd be great. I don't know if I see anyone dying though. Well, that's okay. You have now seen it. Um, but yeah, I I just like it's totally on me, but like Legion of Wax. Two twin of wax and apply this unit's. Oh, whenever he dies, huh? Okay. Crushing demise. Kill a random unit. Kill a random friendly unit. Trade. I like that. See, I haven't even hit level five on them, and you know, you, I, I mentioned because you get a an achievement for it. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a really weird and interesting build. So with this girl, her deal is. She summons imps. Uh, and an imp will just have a... They'll have an ability on. Uh, Impish scholar. I like that. Uh, resolve. Resolve triggers after a combat turn goes. Put a queen zembling in your hand. Imps cost minus one. Like that. Uh, 25 chance to hurt a guy whenever they get on the train. I like that too. If we get Mark of Invasion, spikes. Ah, let's get a shot. We'll have a short life of much glory. Ah! 
so we can put a guy on a on a higher level if we want to. And that's fine with me because this dude can't fight. He can only I'll turn this down just fast just because. So yeah, what you do with this is Imps will die in one hit basically all the time. So why not just sack him off? And then, of course, there's more things where it's like, I have an imp deck, so there's going to be more of whatever, you know? One, huh? Let's stack these guys up a bit more. So yeah, um, based on, there's a lot of sacrifice in this one. And like, you'll see it with morsels, where it's like, we're gonna get a morsel and then we're gonna have it be killed and eaten by something else. And that's fine, that's what we're up to. That's what we're doing here on purpose, intentionally. Um, but with the, the Shark Tail Queen, you know, you have a totally different lineup. <laughs> Um, of just like, these things are built to die. They're born to die. Okay. Enemy units with 10 armor. That's fine. Because we will have to take advantage of that. Let's put some armor on you then, huh? So yeah, and then what we can do is this guy is going to be doing one damage a turn sitting back here, and we can't even use him to take hits because he would need to be in front of this guy. But so what you can do with that is, because he's being protected... Yeah. <laughs> it works. Yeah, because this guy's being protected by this guy. Ordinarily, we would want to have an imp in front of him so he could take a hit and, and be killed. But that's not in the cards, and that's unfortunate. So there are a few cards where it's like, kill something. Like, you actually need to... Cool. Take the card, select something with it, and the card says sacrifice, and then whatever you, whatever you take, it will be killed. It'll just get killed. Such is the nature. If you don't like that, play a different game, you know? And so, uh, he's also taking up space in the sense of, like, he's just sitting here, and I would rather him be anywhere else. And his only way to die is if we target him with a spell, or if he attacks somebody with spikes on him, or a sweep, or something like that. But the point is, is that having sacrifice cards with something like that is actually pretty useful. Interesting. There's more demon cards. I've seen a lot of Awoken stuff just because I keep playing Awoken and Opera. More rage. Interesting. Yeah, let's just get even more of that. Why not? No reason not to. See, so yeah, this is a really, really weird um, deck because, like, 
the whatever the guy, Thornbreaker. I think it's Thornbreaker. Thornbreaker is a pretty logical, you know, setup. Like, you know, you attack guys and they. and then you attack them. And you attack them. And that's fine. You know? It's simple. It's awesome. Looks like you take a hit there. Cool. I like that. This is to an extent another like good example of the of the steam gathering thing of like we're just gonna we're just gonna keep getting more and we're gonna keep piling that up, you know. You know, he, he swings once and he will do damage. And he will swing another time and do whatever he did plus five. And, and he just keeps getting more and more. That's cool. Um, and I feel like that can be a very interesting thing for somebody who's playing like a... If you combine like the imps with him, for example. Combine the imps with that. That does present a problem of itself because you are like having to deal with guys down here. And you have to deal with guys. You have to deal with a bunch of like I, hundreds of zero cost, one, uh, uh, one size fellows. And that's a problem because. You kind of need the, like, stuff open, you know? And so, yeah, not having an open move is that you just don't have dudes here. And that's unfortunate. Hmm. All right, you can now take two hits. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah. That's fine. Take a hit for us, will you? One thing about Talos is that normally she's supposed to pop somebody back to the back row, which can set up, which can mess up your like setups. Fragile. Ugh. Hmm. Let's get a big heal. We keep getting, like, interesting. So yeah, and then another thing about this deck is that you have a bunch of stuff where, like, you have a lot of really, really big heavy hitters in here. Uh, and, like, that's great. And so if you combine that with the the, the Chompin deck, Dissolve, Legend, Apply Rage, hmm, another big boost, and that's a better, more tactical imp as well. I like that. We can definitely deal with more armor. So yeah, like, I wouldn't have done as many episodes, but, like, the game gets to more cool stuff. So you can see that the armor goes on at this guy now. And now all he can do is just take hits. And that's kind of silly. And, like, yeah, it's fine. What he would be doing anyway. So now that's that like rage stuff is getting bigger and bigger.
So we could buff them up to full health and then... Yeah, let's do it. So now we have some big, big tanks upstairs. It's my concern. So now we have the problem of like, we just, we don't have the room for this guy. Like he would be free if we could fit him in, but we don't. Maybe one of these guys gets sacked off. But again, this is why you need like a sacrifice on this, you know? Because if you can't be sacrificing, then eventually you're gonna fill up, you know? Let's move you up here, actually. Just to get you the hell out of here. The one thing that is also really nice about Umbra and, and the eating decks is that, like, there's a lot of stuff where you can just say, yes, we're all putting it on this guy. Because right now in here, I have this dude who I could lead with, or this dude who I could lead with. Maybe her I could lead with. Maybe these dudes I could lead with. Maybe this dude. And, like, those are all really good criteria, you know? Those are all really, really good guys to, to lead with, to put front, to put work. Less damage is good. Hmm. It is more of those. Just keep them coming. This would also be useful to have, like, the, um... Guys show up. What is it? It's a... It's a thing you build where people who you have with you... Yes, people who you have with you will... I'm trying to think of how exactly it works. I'm blanking super hard. So. Oh, the, the room, yeah, I'm trying to say the room capacity. So there's a thing that you can do where based on who you have in there with you, you will keep getting more dudes. You will keep getting more of an ability to send fresh guys in. Have you taken a hand? on him is pretty good. Uh, 
Okay, now what? Get the hell out of here because you're gonna be a problem for me. Look at you front. And then hopefully we'll get something that can uh, heal. Because these guys need some healing. Hmm. This is bad. Yeah, like they have big health, but I can't do anything with it. It's the dude hitting so many times in a row. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, that's what the short is. Very, very depressing episode, I know. Because my, my streak did finally break, but you saw it. You all saw it. I recorded it even. I, this is something that I, I do sometimes uh, where I'm like, oh man, I should really record the end of this run because the run is happening, you know? Like where it's like, okay, this game is so hard that I need everything to go completely perfect in it. And then it does. And like, this game actually isn't that hard where I need literally everything to go perfect, but more difficult than the average video game. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is a really good game. I'm getting a lot of good stuff here. Like, I've had, there's so much to learn here. There's so much to do. And, like, I will say, I think I am coming around to the idea of, yes, this is worth $25. Uh, because, like, obviously dudes need to eat, but I sometimes feel like Steam is hiking its prices too much. But, I don't know. This is a pretty good bang for your buck if you want to buy this game. I'm still not sure on the DLC. Um, I'm kind of against DLC in general, but very good game, I assure you. This has been Friday Night Roguelikes. This is the fifth part of Monster Train, I think, uh, but I've been Alfred. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.